Guard, uh, aka Dirtball, and I play drums for the Kingdom. Yeah. So, what does your band name mean, and where did the inspiration come from? For that Kingdom came from uh, working out. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't include me whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> so Joey, that Liege, the guitar player, lead guitar, um, he's ill today. But uh, me and him. I used to work out a lot, and he still works out a lot. Like, you look at him, he's a fucking monster. But uh, we used to work out a lot, and everything we did at the gym was always for the kingdom of games. Oh. And so we would be bench pressing and be like, this is for the kingdom of games, and, like, dumb shit like that. And uh, we came up with, like, a bunch of other names, and we're the pick it out of the hat type people. Yeah. And it just so happened, like, you know, for that kingdom could be anything. And so <laughs> we're like, let's do it for the kingdom of music and whatnot. And so, yeah, for that kingdom was just one of the names we put in the hat and we ended up pulling it. That's wonderful. That's what ATM did too. Yeah. <laughs> they did the hat trick. I got the honors of pulling the name out. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, I know. My wife wanted to be the one to do it. And I was like, no, you got fired as the manager. <laughs> She quickly got fired after she said we sounded like Limp Bizkit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, Nicole. <laughs> yeah, dude. We had just started writing the casket and we were all super juiced on it and fucking giving Dirtball a ride home. And we're like, Nicole, listen to this. And it's like at the time my phone was terrible. And so it was like a shitty phone recording. <laughs> And she's like, who is this Limp Bizkit? <laughs> and fucking Jordan looked at her like... He got out of the car, wouldn't even say goodbye to her. That's so funny. <laughs> Still hurts right here. Just <laughs> so how did all of you guys meet? Um, I met Joey. Well, I met Lawrence through Joey, but Lawrence has known my family for a long time. Um, but I met Joey after I was in another band that broke up, and me and my brother were starting another band and we've seen him on Facebook for MySpace. Well, MySpace, yeah, that's how, that's how long ago that was. Um, but my brother knew him from high school and he had some videos out there of him playing guitar so just asked him to come over and that's how I met him and then yeah. eventually met him through Joey. Yeah, I had uh, met Joey in high school my freshman year we were on the football team together 2001 and uh I had gotten my driver's license that year, and Joey didn't have a fucking driver's license, but he drove to fucking school every day, and I'd always see him disappearing after football practice, and I was like, where'd this fucker go? And one day, I finally, like, did some detective skills and followed his bitch ass, <laughs> and I saw him hop in this car, I was like, this motherfucker's driving a Jaguar. <laughs> and so I, like, confronted him, and I was like, bro, you drive? And he's like, tell anybody I'm not supposed to my dad's always working <laughs> he lived out in like Derryville or fucking Gerber or something and so he had to drive himself to and from school and so I was like bro I got a driver's license and you got a car <laughs> and he's like yeah and I'm like I know where all the parties are at like all the time and he's like yeah <laughs> and so that's how our <laughs> friendship developed and uh I didn't know at the time he played music, and so I was joining a band, and it was short-lasted, but the guys are still friends of mine. And so anyways, when I found out Joey played guitar, I was like, fuck yeah, like, I wanna start a band with him. And so my very first band was me, him, and Dean Rice, the drummer of Gorskin Coffin, and we called ourselves Mutt. <laughs> <laughs> And we, like, our first song we worked on was 94 Hours by As I Lay Dying, because they were like, 
big for me. But I had such stage fright that where we jammed, all the lights had to be turned off. And I was doing the Aaron Lewis thing where I was curled up in this little ball and nobody could look at me because I was so embarrassed to be screaming and I was terrible. Yeah. Well, what was your guys' first show like and where was it? My first show ever? Or yeah, you can first do ever. Show? Okay. You can do both. Uh, well, my first show ever was <laughs> a battle of the bands. Um, not, no, sorry, not a battle of bands. A talent show here in town at the fucking State Theater. And uh, we were the only band. And we still got a certificate because we were the only band in the music division. <laughs> <laughs> and it was terrible. It was so terrible. We sounded like shit. We played like shit. I was like in eighth grade. And then uh, the first show in For the Kingdom, I thought was was really good. At, at the Concrete Lodge, right? Yeah. Yeah. My first oh, the show. Oh, that was just recent? No, the, the first one we opened for after that thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was our first show. Any of us have played over 10 years. Yeah, it's been a long time. Uh, my first show, I was in Plague the Altar. And I was on parole and I had an ankle monitor on. <laughs> Got it. And so my parole officer let me play and it was at Wind River. And he let me play because he was, he was a really badass dude. And so we were doing our opening song and uh, everybody knows my, I go crazy-ish. <laughs> And so I got into the pit while I'm doing vocals, and as soon as I got down there and I just threw an elbow, this dude, AC, stomped on my monitor on accident. Oh, no. And so my first show lasted 15 seconds. And <laughs> the rest of the time I sat there. Dude, we played with like Power of the Power Bear. Bear. And uh, what was it? The other one, um, fuck, I don't even remember who there. Beyond Doubt Shadow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Did the cop show up because of that? No, so I grabbed the ankle monitor and I put it back together and I held it freaking out and Randy took off with Joey and then went and got super glue <laughs> and so I sat on the bench and I super glued my fucking ankle monitor back on <laughs> and there was no call. I escaped going back to prison for a little while. Eventually, I did. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. But, it's okay. <laughs> right? <laughs> but uh, our first show at the Concrete Lodge is for that kingdom. Uh, I thought it was super fun. And then I really realized we are way older. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was so sore the next day. And then even then when I was moving around doing my vocals, I was like, holy shit. When we practice and I'm standing there, I could do these things. When I'm moving <laughs> around and there's like the heat element of things, damn, I'm not as good as I thought I was. <laughs> I quickly realized that you can't really get into it like you're 21 when you're 30 years old anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was like 33 and uh, I was like headbanging and stomping and my ankles are like, stop it, old man. <laughs> Growing up, who were your musical influences? Um, well, I, my, my dad first introduced me to music when I was, I don't know, probably like five or six. And he grew up on like 80s hair metal. So it was like a lot of Metallica, a lot of Megadeth, uh, Ozzy Osbourne, <laughs> fucking Black Sabbath, Mark at the Moon, uh, Guns N' Roses, Pantera, shit like that. So that's that was my first like introduction into to music. And then when I once I got like old enough to like make my own decisions, um, that's when I started venturing into like the the heavy stuff. But the the band that made me want to play music was yeah. The Used. And it wasn't even, it, the, the one person was their vocalist. And I'm not even a vocalist, but just Bert his, McCracken, Bert McCracken, his commitment and his dedication to like every song that, at least in my eyes, I, yeah. you know, just definitely feel that emotion. It made me, made me want to do that. Yeah, they're a good band. Uh, I, Grew up in the 90s, I was born in the 80s, so my introduction to music was like Michael Jackson. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, I was like Michael Jackson and Prince and like 
I liked that shit growing up. And then I got into rap, and so I was huge into NWA and Ice Cube, KRS One, <laughs> fucking Tupac, Notorious. Like I was all rap. But then what got me into uh, metal or new metal and rock and everything was Corn. The I heard got the life. And I was like, dude, that's tight because he kind of like raps in it. Yeah. And so I was like, that shit was tight. And so I went and bought that whole fucking Follow the Leader CD. <laughs> and then I really liked it. So then I went and bought the first CD, like Corn, and then Life is Peachy. And then I think Untouchables was coming out or whatever was after that. And so I had like all these Corn albums. And then I was like, they came out with the Family Values tour. And so then I'm like listening to Limp Bizkit and I got into Rammstein. I already listened to Ice Cube and then it's just like, okay. And so <laughs> Disturbed came out and I started listening. And then it's just like, I started really just liking like the melodies and, and the breakdowns, which they were breakdowns, but nobody recognized them as that. Like, I think for me personally, I was like, Korn isn't the innovator of a breakdown, but they were doing it long before anybody else was. And then Deftones had that like, just like cool all over the place type yeah. shit and so I didn't I did not want to be a vocalist at first I wanted to be a drummer <laughs> and like I don't know I could not keep a beat for shit I still can't I'm like you're, you're I, a lot better I'm a lot better <laughs> like I, I now can keep a beat but like I'm nowhere near being a drummer for a band. Yeah. I didn't want to be a drummer when I first started playing. I, I first started out trying to do guitar. Yeah. And I couldn't really? I couldn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I am. And then I tried bass because I was like, oh, it's too less, it's too <laughs> less <laughs> ring. That's what I did too. <laughs> nope, it's just as hard. Yeah. That shit either. But what made me want to be a screamer was Tim Lambesis from Azalea Dying. Yeah. Josh Dogan. I feel like we're gonna have a lot of Azalea Dying references. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot in here. We're gonna get a lot of haters for that. Yeah. 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 Azalea Dying was the, the reason I wanted to do drums. Yeah. 94 hours. Yeah. Dude, we still listen collapse. to them. We almost saw them like two years ago. They came we to did. Uh, <laughs> front row. No. I was front row. I have videos. I straight fangirled because I was in the front right there. <laughs> And it was right after he got off of yep, being arrested. Yep, and I'm not even shitting you. I fangirled so hard <laughs> because <laughs> he fucking does his whole fist pump to some of the yeah. members, and he did it to me four times. And then I talked to him after the show, and I was like, "You're my inspiration." <laughs> <laughs> and I have the videos of it, and I watch them periodically. Like when I doubt myself, I'm like, "Tim Lambesis touched this hand," <laughs> and I don't care if he tried to kill his wife or not. Like, <laughs> but yeah, Tim Lambesis, Josh Scogan, the original Norma Jean mm. vocalist, and then the Chariot vocalist, uh, Phil Bozeman, Mitch Lucker, like. Those dudes make me want to do tones and like yeah. nobody, I don't give a fuck when it comes to the whole cupping <laughs> argument or anybody's highs. Just listen to Mitch Lucker. That's it. Just yeah, one, listen that to dude, that early suicide silence. That bro. dude was a brutal vocalist. Yeah. yeah. R.I.P. Yep. Dude, <laughs> Joey told me what like, did you hear like when he found out that uh, Mitch had passed away, it was like on Halloween or yeah. whatever. It was um, like the day after, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, like the day after or some he yeah, so Joey texted me and told me and I was like I felt like I had lost a friend. Yeah. I was like, no fucking way, because I was really getting into them at the time. Like I listened to them and heard them and I liked their music, but I mean I was really into them. <laughs> what is your guys' songwriting process? Uh breakdown, breakdown, breakdown. Probably, <laughs> probably the most simple writing process ever. ever. <laughs> It's uh Joey, what did you come up with? Here's Jordan. So once yeah, once Joey <laughs> comes with a riff, I'll just I'll just ask him to play it over and over and over and over again. And I'll yeah. sit there and I'll have him play it until I find a drum beat that fits it the best. And if what I love about him is if he doesn't like it, he tells me. <laughs> yeah. Some people might think it's him being a dick. Right. Yeah. But that's what I want. If if he thinks it sucks, then I think it sucks. Yeah. yeah. So I do the same thing vocally. Like I always fall into my safety net of doing the, my extended long highs. Yeah. And I'm like, they sound sick as fuck. Why not just keep doing it? But then Dirtfall's like, hey, 
stop doing that. <laughs> And I'm like, okay. And then Joey's always like, can you flow with the beat better? And I'm like, yeah, I could fucking try, asshole. And so. But, I, I think mean, it's, saying that. Yeah. It's just a super simple process. It's usually yeah. Joey comes with a riff and then I'll add drums to it. And then. And then I'll, once that's set, then he'll start. Yeah, I'll, I'll freestyle like patterns and stuff while they're doing it. And that's how I do my lyric pro my lyrical process too. And so I'll freestyle and we record everything. So then I sit there at work, at home, and I just watch it over and over again. And I'll like hear something that I said. And then I'm like, oh, okay. Mm. But I like the tone and I like what's going on. So then I'll start writing something, just a line for that one part. And then so it's cohesive and everything flows together and it's not a pointless dumbass song that one line will spawn the entire song and it I don't know, it makes it easier at least for me and i feel i know lawrence feels the same way but we've both played with joey for so long yeah, yeah. that we know how he writes yeah and we know we know <laughs> yeah. kind of what he's going to do next yeah and vice versa they know how i play drums and we know how he does vocals so I think playing so long together just makes it a lot easier. Yeah, you know, like if he's gonna hit like a certain pattern or something, you that can feel it. You, yeah, you could feel the transition and the change, and then you could feel if it's gonna go heavy, if it's gonna go lower, if it's gonna go faster, slow, or whatever. And then that's how I do my patterns too. It's like I know when they're gonna change, and so that way I'll change my tone and then drop it down. And it seems like you know you've been out here we could freestyle a song yeah and it seems like it was a song that we wrote you know yeah fucking months ago but it's like the first time that we're doing it who would you guys compare your band to mm. oh what was that one band the hardcore one pale pale face oh pale face was yeah pale face uh body snatcher body snatcher yeah weird fuck it <laughs> I heard a song from Body Snatcher and I sent it to them and I was like, this just their writing process and their sound. It's like, dude, we don't sound like them, but if you were to categorize us, it would be amongst that category. And it's then, a similar style. Yeah. And then that Pale Face song was just like, okay, that's the closest band we've heard that we play like. Which is funny because we just like, at least for me, I just started listening to this band, these bands like not even six months ago yeah <laughs> i've been playing this style of music for like over 10 years yeah <laughs> but i'm like they're so dope and then it's like fucking man i really want to play a show like i feel that if we were on a bill with them that it would just be banger after banger after banger like whatever bands, that would be cool. it would be dope as shit but um also limp biscuit yeah, I think we sound a lot like them. Thanks, Nicole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Fred Durst, my fucking muse. <laughs> what is it like playing shows in a small town? It's fucking terrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love it, it. I sometimes I prefer it. Yeah, because it's it. I don't know, for lack of a better term, it feels more intimate. Yeah, and. I don't know. Any show, any live show, in my eyes, is is good. Yeah. There could be one person there, which I've done yeah. in the past. Um, but to me, a show with one person feels the same as a show with a hundred people. Yeah. yeah, and there's like there's a difference because for me, I'm like, yeah, I want to play a show with a lot of people, and I want to see people go fucking crazy because I I'm not like. I think that our music is good enough that people would go fucking yeah. crazy for it. But then playing in front of just your friends and family is just fun. Because yeah. it's like, you know, you get to hang out and everybody that's there, you know, you're friends with. It's like an episode of Cheers. Right. And so it's like... I think there's definitely less stress. Yeah. When, yeah. Like a smaller crowd. But... And there's like always funny moments when your like family members who aren't into this mm -hmm. scene come just to support you and yeah. then they try oh. to mosh and yeah. you're just like, oh gosh. <laughs> like, <laughs> My mother-in-law is like that. She's like, I don't like your music at all. I don't. <laughs> That's how Jesse's But I support is. you. <laughs> I'm like, thanks, Mom. My my when I was in the other band with Joey, 
and him sometimes when he was not <laughs> when I wasn't in behind jail. bars. <laughs> <laughs> um, my mom came to every show, and my mom was like her music mm -hmm. style is country. Yeah, mm -hmm. but she came to every show because she was supporting her fucking boys. Yeah, that's so cute. And she's the metal mama. Like, I don't. Whoever you are, you can say your mom's best, but <laughs> Michelle was definitely that fucking love you, mom. Jesse's love you, mom. Jesse's parents always show up to his shows, and it's always cute because they're like that too. They're like country yeah. people, and they always show up and like they're plot and stuff, and they're like, "Go, Jesse!" Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, look at my baby! Yeah. Baby, open your eyes. She's open always your like eyes. in the front row recording too. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you guys are saying, but good job. Yeah, yeah that's what Jesse. Always says. <laughs> I think it's a love song, honey. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a love song. <laughs> That's all our songs. They're love songs. Yeah. 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 No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you wanted me to lie with you or not. No. So I did. I was like thinking about it. I was like, one of our songs is about me being in prison and then like hoping somebody, you know, saves me. Breaks uh, you out. Yeah. That's cool. And then more like an emotional breakdown or breakout than like physically. Mm -hmm. And then another song is about an ex-girlfriend and you just like fucking hate that bitch. Like you <laughs> give everything to it and it just doesn't work out. And now you're just like fucking the casket's closing on you. <laughs> then another song is about the Dallas Eyeball Killer. Mm -hmm. And then our last song is about a... It's a hate song. It's a hate song <laughs> for over entitled people and their opinions and shit yeah. like that so it's plus i write like a teenage high school girl i'm very emo at heart <laughs> but they're, they're great lyrics in your billy eilish notebook in my billy eilish notebook <laughs> hey we share the same b-day like we're birthday twins <laughs> but yeah i'm like lyrically dude i i write some pretty dope ass lyrics yeah <laughs> yeah I'm, i've always liked the way you write lyrics even when you were in the the other bands that I wasn't in. I've always been a fan of your vocals and your lyrics. Ah, oh, thanks, buddy. <laughs> I love your feet. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. That's about all I got. <laughs> Dude, I like Dirt Ball could turn any song into a hardcore two-step <laughs> song and that could make it break down instantaneously. Yeah. I like... We messed around with the California Love by yeah. Tupac back in the day. Yeah, I should bring that back. <laughs> yeah, it was just a it was yeah. just a big two step yeah. hardcore song. <laughs> and then the last question: What is your band's goal for music? Do you plan on sticking with the genre or experimenting? Mm, uh, I don't think I'm ever going to step outside my genre. <laughs> a little so. It, my opinion is I don't want to step outside the genre. Yeah. But I would be open to some experimental stuff. But yeah. Mainly just staying in our genre yeah and just have fun yeah yeah i can't sing at all so don't even that's yeah but just notion. like <laughs> <laughs> plus i'm like i can't compete with the best you know metalcore vocalist in town and i'm just like i'm leaving that sing song to him he's got <laughs> that in the bag step into uncharted territory bro <laughs> can't do that but uh i think we're gonna I don't know. I, our goal basically as a band is just to get heavier and better at every song that we do. Yeah. And the you can definitely tell by the set that we play and like the progression of songs and the timing and style, vocally, guitar wise, drum wise, like we're stepping up more and more every song. Yeah. Basically, I want to get to the point where each song you just have to like basically break a bone just to <laughs> continue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want people to like think about starting a fight when they yeah. hear music. Yeah. yeah. Like ten years ago, like that was when hardcore dancing was like a thing. Yeah. Yeah. It I, was. I miss playing a breakdown and seeing people do that. Yeah. yeah. That doesn't really happen that much anymore. No. I'm like, I want to see you know like a circle pit. Like, I want to see some hardcore dancing, but just yeah. two steps. No one two, does that yeah. shit anymore. I'm going to two-step crip walk one time. <laughs> Please Just do. do fucking crip walk around a whole mosh pit. <laughs> 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 we saw a video of some guy doing that, and I was like, that's my fucking, that's my spirit animal right there. I want to do that. But definitely, we just want to get heavier. Get heavier, and I will continue to play music until I physically can't. 
Yeah. So if I'm still 75 years old, my body still lets me, I'm still going to still gonna play. Yeah. Still play your breakdowns. I'm going to go yeah. until either I can't hear anymore, which I'll still go then. And I'll just be like <laughs> uh, the super metal version of Rancid. Yeah. And then uh, if I can't scream anymore, well, I'll still be in a pit. That's funny. You guys should like stay as a band when you're like old men and just like still do shows. We're like, already there. Like, yeah, we're like, when you're like in your 60s, bro. Dude. Just, like straight up old guys. I hope I make it to 60. Right? right? <laughs> well, so far, all the bands that we played with, and we've been lucky to play with really good bands, but we are the oldest ones there every time. <laughs> it says something about how old we are when we get done with the show and we're limping taking our yeah. stuff out to the car <laughs> dude like during the if you watch any that like ever we're so into it and just going and going and going and then the second our last note hits we're like thank you <sighs> thank grabbing you. our just bag. reaching for everywhere yeah. it hurts. <laughs> like there's air somewhere around here for me to breathe and then it's the worst like we forgot how fucking shitty it is to unload your gear oh, yeah. after you play. It's terrible. We need fucking a road crew. So if anyone's watching this and wants to be our road crew, hit us up. That's wonderful. Yeah. Did someone just knock? Oh no, that's just somebody shooting again. Oh. Red, <laughs> red bluff. <Yeah. laughs> Gnarly Hokona's barking wasn't too loud in that last section. I swear to God. Oh my God. Right? I know we're, <laughs> we're trying to run the hobos out. <laughs> no fucking three beers for four dollars for you, motherfuckers. You that still, shit's eight bucks now. You still got them Union Jacks for one nine nine? Nope. Son of a them man. Union Jacks are like two fifty now. God bless America, man. <laughs>